serial correlation of the first order. So we have uh, the model which is uh, yt equals to alpha plus beta xt plus ut. Okay. And uh, given that, we are assuming that this error term is uh, is following this process that is ut is equal to rho ut minus 1 plus epsilon t. So ut is dependent upon the one period lagged error term that is error which occurred in in, in period t minus 1. So for example you are modeling the error term in period t then that error term in period t is dependent upon the error term in period t minus 1. Okay, so what you can find out is that error term is dependent upon, it is dependent upon uh, ut minus 1, it is dependent upon rho and it is also dependent upon epsilon t. What epsilon t is, I mean this is also, because you will have to uh, find out what epsilon t is by regression. So epsilon t, will have to make some assumptions over the epsilon t that, that's called the no white noise term, we'll talk about it later. But in general, it is dependent upon, in, in the first order autoregressive process, it is dependent upon ut minus 1, rho and epsilon t. This process in which this ut is dependent only on the error term which is lagged with one period, only with one period and lagged with one period, that is called the first order autoregressive process. Okay, And if you look at this coefficient, this coefficient has to be between minus 1 to 1. This, this has to lie, this is less than 1 because otherwise the explosive behavior would occur. Okay, in case if you put that rho is greater than 1, you will not be able to find the solution to this. I mean, there would be the explosion in solution. And what is this rho called? Rho is, of course, the coefficient which will occur with the error term in period t minus 1. As you could see here, your rho is ut equals to rho ut minus 1 plus epsilon t. So rho is nothing but the coefficient with the error term in period t minus 1. And this coefficient is also called the first order autocorrelation coefficient. Okay, so now we are slowly and gradually moving into serial correlation or, or autocorrelation telling how to model autocorrelation. Okay, so this is a very brief introduction of uh, serial correlation of the first order. Let me just uh, quickly tell you how to how to write for autoregressive process uh, of first order. That is, these, this is also called AR1 process, which you have just seen, which is first order autoregressive process. So you have the model yt equals to alpha plus beta xt plus ut where ut is dependent upon the error term in period t minus 1 uh, with minus 1 is less than rho is less than let me just underline this with a different ink. Okay. The second could be your second order autoregressive process, which is AR2, which is your second order autoregressive process. It will be yt equals to alpha plus beta xt plus ut and just see how will you model ut. ut would be equal to rho 1 which is dependent upon period t minus 1 since ut is dependent till the two periods it is second order ut minus 2 plus epsilon t okay and you can also write for the nth order autoregressive process just for the sake of completeness ARN which is the nth order autoregressive process 
r which is y t equals to alpha plus beta x t plus u t and u t is dependent till the nth order error term so it is it'll go till row 1 u t minus 1 plus row 2 u t minus 2 and plus so on to row n u t minus n plus epsilon t okay so this is this is uh, the nth order autoregressive process fine and let me just uh, give you a brief uh, le le let me just brief you about this error term basically this et error term which is this this et is uh, these are the errors which are independently and identically distributed these are independently and identically this is the same assumption which you have made for ut earlier but now because you have to model ut itself there would be an error term in that so you have to assume that this ET is now behaving like a UT. So independently and identically distributed with mean 0, with mean equal to 0 and constant variance and constant variance so that E of ET, so mean is 0 and the variance is ET square, E of ET square is say sigma square, okay, rather we should write it sigma square E which is less than infinity, it also satisfies that given these two errors, these ET errors, there is no correlation between ET and ET minus S, it satisfies that for S not equal to zero. Okay. So and these are called the white noise terms. This ET, these are called the white noise term. white noise terms clear now so ut is dependent upon the past errors it could be ut minus 1 it could be dependent upon two errors it could be dependent upon n errors and so on so in case of the covariance between these error terms so i will just write it for you guys here if covariance between the error terms is positive okay that is if ut minus 1 is positive then ut is also positive then in case if covariance is positive then you have positive autocorrelation or if covariance is negative that in case if ut minus 1 is negative then ut is also negative then in case of covariance is negative then you have negative autocorrelation. Okay, so this was an introduction to the serial correlation of first order, second order, and nth order. Fine. Um, in next recording, we'll talk about what are the consequences of ignoring serial correlation.